Okay, are we are we all ready? Can we begin? Okay, all right. Sige po. Uh, we'll start. If you have your Bible with you, turn with me in Second Peter, uh, chapter one. <clears throat> Ang akin pong mensahe ngayong gabi is a sure word of prophecy. Yan po ang ating uh, topic ngayong gabi. A sure word of prophecy. And of course, it uh, it's in line with what's going on around us today because we take cognizant of the fact that all of these things uh that's going on right now is in fulfillment of uh, the prophecy uttered by men of God both in the Old and in the New Testament. So I'll begin reading in verse 16, 2 Peter chapter 1. Peter said, For we did we, for we did not follow cleverly devised myths. When we, when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Diyan muna tayo. All right. May the Lord add blessings to the reading of His Word. Of course, we know that Peter is and was among the original 12 apostles. His conversion was actually supernatural because the Lord revealed himself to Peter. Uh, you remember there was a time that they went out fishing the whole day, catching nothing at all. And then the Lord spoke to them and said, you go back again. Uh, I think I mentioned this last time. And you know that Peter was an experienced fisherman. Why would he listen to Jesus when Jesus is not even a fisherman? He is a carpenter. All right? So Peter uh, followed the Lord. Maybe for him, uh, what have I got to lose? But for some reason, he put confidence in the suggestion of the Lord that they need to go back fishing again that same day. The Lord said, you go back. And then when you go back, you, you cast your nets. And lo and behold, no, Peter said, we, we, we toil all day and cut nothing. But because of your word, we're going back. And they did catch a lot of fish. And then the Lord said, okay, from now on, when they, when they went back to the shore, the Lord said, now I'm going to make you fishers of men. So he followed the Lord. Uh, and Peter is a headstrong kind of a guy, easily provoked, hot-tempered. It's uh, already uh, the kind of character he possessed was already written in the Bible. You know, the Bible did not hide what kind of a person he was. So, in many instances... Uh, the Bible exposed his temperament, his uh, uh, impatience, and many other things. He denied the Lord three times, and yet it was to him that the keys of heaven, uh, that the keys of the kingdom of heaven, was given. And he was among the three that was privileged to witness the transformation or the transfiguration of Christ, recorded in Matthew 17, and that is actually what he's going to refer here that he was a part, that he witnessed, he heard a voice uh, that spoke from heaven. That was when they were with Jesus, along with James and John, the three of them, Peter, James, and John, who witnessed the transfiguration of Christ when Christ was transfigured before them, that the, the, the light shone on him was like uh, the light of the sun. And then they saw Moses and Elijah, uh, and so on and so forth. So, so Peter here would like to make an impression to the believers that 
the gospel. This thing that we're doing, what we preach to you, whatever it is that uh, we share to you, we would like to let you know that we're not following myths, legends, make belief, you know, because he said, uh, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. And that has something to do with Matthew 17, when they saw Jesus transfigured before them. Okay, you know, you cannot, in a court of law, the, the most powerful evidence that the judge put more heavy weight on is an eyewitness account. Especially if the eyewitness, uh, even if the defense will try to discredit, you know, demoralize the eyewitness, but we can really stand his ground or her ground and really can, can, can narrate the details of how the crime was committed. Then by that account, you know, a, a verdict of guilt can be uh, pronounced to the accused. So in a court of law, even in a court of law, the eyewitness account really holds a lot of water. And that is what Peter is trying to impress on the believers, the, the recipient of this letter. We're not just talking here. We're not just issuing letter without proof because we saw it with our own eyes. We were there. Okay, we mm -hmm. experienced it. So verse 17. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, the voice was born to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Okay? We ourselves heard this very voice. Okay? From heaven. For we were with him on the holy mountain. That is recorded in Matthew 17. Okay? Now, uh, how can we uh, apply that same experience that Peter, James, and John had with the Lord on the Mount of Transfiguration to your own individual walk. Because Peter can say, we have a sure word of prophecy. We're not following cleverly devised fables and myths or legends, but we're eyewitnesses. Okay? So how can you, being a follower of Jesus, that have not seen the Lord in the flesh, we are born 2,000 years later, after the birth of Christianity. We were not there, you know, when Christianity uh, was in its infancy or the birth of it. We were not there. We did not see Jesus Christ. So how can we apply this to our lives, to our walk, individually as a believer how can we have an unmovable uh unshakable stand amidst being bombarded with so many criticisms and so many information that tries to belie what we hold dear in our hearts okay so every believer must have a firm commitment and stand knowing that what we are actually doing what we are actually following and, you know, have embraced and willing to lay down our life with is not a concoction of our own imagination. Okay? So therefore, my, my, uh, my thought and my, my desire for everyone tonight is, do you have in your own personal walk a sure word of prophecy. Okay, because Peter can say this. What about us? Can we say in our hearts, I have a sure word of prophecy? Can we say, I too am an eyewitness? Can we say that? What gave us the right to be an eyewitness or to be a witness to Jesus? Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Verse 8. Right. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power 
when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. Okay? In mm -hmm. Jerusalem, in Judea, mm -hmm. and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now you may say, well, Pastor, Jesus is talking to the disciples that, you know, uh, eventually received the Holy Ghost at the day of Pentecost. How can you apply that to us? Well, every Holy Ghost filled child of God becomes a witness. If you are Holy Ghost filled, then you become a witness for Jesus. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that is what the Holy Ghost will do in your life. Right. Okay? He will bring what Jesus said back into your remembrance and help you decipher, understand, comprehend the mysteries in His Word. Amen. Okay, and then Jesus becomes real in your life. Okay, mm -hmm. because when you read the Bible, you just don't see letters. You just don't see stories. Brothers and sisters, uh, let's, let's, let's use this for an example. When you watch a movie, okay, especially when the, the plot of the movie speaks to you, can you, ex can, can you say and have you experienced that while watching the movie, you see yourself in the movie? Mm. Can anyone say an amen? Yeah, amen. Oh, amen? And sometimes it makes you cry. You're right. Isn't it? Why? Because even if you are not in the movie, mm -hmm. but the, 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 the plot of the movie, the story that's being dramatized in the movie, you know... Uh, it's the same experience you went through mm -hmm. and therefore you are able to relate to the story or the plot of the movie. You become one with it, with the story. Yeah. And you see yourself mm -hmm. as it's being portrayed by by actors mm -hmm. or actors, whoever it is that's performing it or, or dramatizing it. See? Mm -hmm. In the same principle, the scripture is the same, brothers and sisters. Oh, we, yeah. we may not... You know, we may live 2,000 years after the Bible was written. But because the story that's being portrayed here, we see ourselves. When you look at Job, his uh, trials, his uh, sufferings, brothers and sisters, you are able to relate, you know, to some of his experiences. Joseph, David, all of these characters uh, whose lives and, 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 and experiences speaks volumes, then all of these individuals that you've read in the scripture, mm -hmm. part of what they went through is what you have tasted yourself personally in your life. Brothers and sisters, and therefore mm -hmm. when you read the Bible being filled by the Holy Spirit, you see yourself in the scripture, and then the, 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 the Bible speaks to you, it reaffirms, it cements, okay, your relationship with God. And then you can say, I have a sure word of prophecy because now I become one with the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I take the word as mine, okay? Amen. That's why Paul said, brothers and sisters, that we are living epistles. Let's read that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's read in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 2 and 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. All right. It says here, you, okay, the people, yourselves are our letter of recommendation. Read them on our hearts. Okay. To be known and read by all. Wow. And you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us. So now Paul is saying you're not just a mere ink. <laughs> yeah. Because the word becomes you. Okay. You become one with the word. What you display now is the actualization. Okay. The words coming into fruition. The word becomes 
becoming flesh in your life. You're mm -hmm. not just hearing it. You're not just reading it. You are now living it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And you show that you are a letter from Christ, delivered by us, written not with ink. Look at that. The word of God, you being the word of God, is not written with ink. Who wrote mm -hmm. it? But with the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Huh? Not on tablets of stone. Praise the Lord. But on Amen. tables of human hearts. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So Amen. if God can write his words into your heart through the infilling of the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters, then we can say, I have a sure word of prophecy. Amen. Amen. I have confidence in the word of God. I have confidence, praise the Lord, mm -hmm. in what I read. I, I have confidence that what God promised will come to reality. It will be fulfilled, brothers and sisters. So when Peter said that we have a sure word of prophecy, it should not only be he that can say it. We too, 2,000 years later, the believers of the Lord in the end time must have the same affirmation in our lives because there's so many persuasions today. Brothers and sisters, there's so many persuasions today that if we're not careful, it may persuade you. Okay? It may uh, rattle you. It may... Even let you doubt the word of God. If not careful, if we succumb to these persuasions okay, that belies the promises of God, brothers and sisters, and you yourself does not have a sure word of prophecy, you're just reading the scripture, but it did not become one with you, then my brothers and sisters, we are standing on a shaky ground. It would be easy for us to be persuaded to believe all this information. You know, actually, even what's going on in Israel today, you know, there is a battle of propaganda and information. You know, yes. different, then, uh, different, different news yeah. uh, outlets are saying different things. You know, yeah, you know, when that hospital was bombed, the Hamas is saying Israel, the, the Israeli have done it. And then the Israeli proves that it was not us. It was a misfire coming from Hamas camp. You know, they misfired it. So, so on and so forth. But lots of Western media opposed that, that are opposed to Israel would rather believe the Palestinians brothers and sisters. So, yeah. you know, uh, mm -hmm. there is a, there's not only a battle, you know, against each other in terms of military conflict, now there is a battle between words, propaganda, and all of these things. You know, so there's yeah. so many uh, lies being thrown in the air. And, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of people failing to investigate, failing to uh, really verify, you know, the veracity of all of this information will accept who client sink or whatever it is they hear. But as an sister so we are, we are living... In a time that there's so many manipulations, brothers and sisters, you know, uh, so many hackers, so many scammers, you know, lie mm -hmm. can be presented in a beautiful way today. <laughs> Why do you think a lot of people were scammed? You know, if you heard about uh, the, the, the Ponzi scheme, the scam by uh, that guy in New York, you know, billions and billions and billions of dollars. You know, in Madoff, Mr. Madoff, right? because lies mm. are being presented in a beautiful way. And that's how Satan operates, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So turn with me in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. So my, 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 the heart of this message is it is very, very important that we have a sure word of prophecy. All right. Mm. So let us... Uh, Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I think it's in chapter 11. All right. 
Yeah, 2 Corinthians 11. Let's begin reading in verse 13. For such men are false apostles, deceitful work workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. Imagine, this was 2,000 years ago, and these guys were already operating. And, mm. and the goal is actually to so people can be persuaded to believe a lie. So how much mm. for today, with so much technology and sophistication, they can present lies and falsehood in such, yeah. in, in such an attractive way so they can fool people, they, they, they can deceive people, brothers and sisters, to believe. You know, like what we're talking a while ago. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So time and again, I reiterated that when Satan appears, he does not come and portray himself with a horn <laughs> and with a with a tail, you know, something <laughs> scary. That's Hollywood. No. Satan will come so beautifully, brothers and sisters. Very attractive. Very handsome. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Valentino or whatever it is. <laughs> so, so he can deceive. All right? So because Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Uh, I think yeah. I remember Martin Luther also had a fight with the devil. You know, yeah. the devil uh, was whispering to Luther's ears. And he's saying, mm. I am your savior. The same experience mm. I had many, many nights ago. Uh, and Luther had the same battle with the enemy. And Luther was able to differentiate the voice of the Lord and the voice of Satan. And therefore he said, Get thee behind me, Satan. You know? Hallelujah. So the one quality of the bride or the ship, the Lord said, my ship hears my voice. So you have the ability to distinguish, you know, uh, whether it's the shepherd that's talking or it's the voice of a stranger that's whispering to your ears. We must have that ability, brothers and sisters, because that's one quality that we have to possess being Holy Ghost-filled Christian. We're not supposed to be easily persuaded by all of this uh, information, you know, people throws in the air. So it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servant of righteousness. So mm -hmm. if Satan can do that, so he so 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 are his agents, you know, can do the same. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, disguise themselves as servant of righteousness, their end will correspond to their needs. So, you know, sometimes you need to be careful if a preacher is a sweet talker. <laughs> mm -hmm. there, there probably is an ulterior motive behind. Brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. hallelujah. A true minister of God is not afraid to preach what God wants him to preach, even if sometimes or more often than that, people get hurt. Because mm -hmm. not, the, not having the intention of hurting the people, but the word of God is like a two-edged sword. It will really pierce unto the dividing asunders of bones and marrows. So mm -hmm. a true servant of God, Brothers and sisters will, will, will be just a mouthpiece, you know, of the Almighty. Okay, so we're living in that situation right now, brothers and sisters. So therefore, let's go back to Second Peter. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1. All right. Verse 19. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to you. All right. Peter is saying, because of our experience, being an eyewitnesses, hearing the voice that spoke to the Lord on the holy mountain, then we would like to impress upon you that we have a sure word of prophecy. What you are receiving from us is an information and a message directly from the throne of the Almighty God. It's a sure word. 
a confirm, fully confirm prophetic word to which this is the reminder. This is now the reminder to which you will do well to pay attention. Mm. That's your part. That's the part of the believers that we need to take heed of what we're hearing because the talker or the speaker is making an impression and saying, guys, brothers and sisters, these are not legends. These are not myths. These are not fantasy. This is not Marvel. This is not Hollywood. This is a sure word of prophecy. And it is to your own good that you hate, that you listen, okay? That you take it seriously because it is a sure word of prophecy. And he using a metaphor, all right? Using a metaphor with regards to this prophetic word, he compared it to this, to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place. Mm. Wow. The prophetic word is like a lamp. Brothers and sisters, when there is a blackout, a single tiny bitty bitty light is much appreciated. <laughs> Because at least it helps you, you know, that you are not hitting, you know, every corners of your house. Huh? Have you experienced being in a blackout and then you're using the light of your cell phone and thank God you have a cell phone. <laughs> yeah. But when the battery uh, is exhausted, then you're back to darkness again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what, what uh, Peter is saying, we're living in a dark world. So I am comparing this prophetic sure word of prophecy into a lamp that shines in a dark place. And in reality, brothers and sisters, you know what? When the prophetic word becomes you, then you are not actually holding a literal lamp. You are the light of the right. world. Amen. 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 You become the light. Okay? You become the prophetic word in the flesh. That is why, you know, this is coming to me now. If we truly believe the Lord is coming soon, is our life really living and making an impression to our fellow brothers and sisters that we are, <laughs> you know, approaching the end of time? Okay? Because we are being observed. We don't know who's observing us. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do we have a firm commitment? Do we really believe and live what we believe and have received that we are now approaching the end? Is our life uh, in parallel with our confession that we are approaching the end? Yeah. Huh? I mean... Because if we are now the sure word of prophecy, living in the flesh. My, this is this is really something. <laughs> I should have preached this in the church. <laughs> okay, you know, if, if, if we, <laughs> you are, you are. The Lord is giving us something. Mean, yeah, if, if you are pastor. really, let us see if we are really uh, believing this prophecy. Let's be like Israel and all of these things. Okay, this is a sure word of prophecy. Amen. Okay, mm. these things that's happening before our eyes today is the sure word of prophecy coming to fruition. But how is it translating to us? Are we now the sure word of prophecy? Are we now the lamb that's shining in dark place? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we now the daylight? Mm -hmm. Okay, another. It says this. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. So if the morning star is rising in your heart, what becomes of you? Did not Daniel say the righteous becomes the stars of heaven? Amen. Stars, what do they produce? Light. Light. Amen. And stars don't shine in the morning. No. Stars <laughs> shine at night. At night. When there Amen. is darkness. That is where you appreciate light when there is darkness. 
And Amen. we are now living in a dark place, brothers and sisters. And you Amen. are now the light that's shining in the dark place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. We are now the light shining. We are now, uh, brothers and sisters, the sure word of prophecy. It's not just the Bible. The bride of Christ is the sure word of prophecy. Living Amen. in the flesh. Because the word has become flesh in our lives. Okay, when people see you, what do they see? They should see, brothers and sisters, hallelujah, that we are gearing into something. Okay, we're preparing ourselves into that great catching away. Okay, we live a life of a pilgrim. You know, our attachment to the material world becomes less and less and less and less. And people in the world are, 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 are wondering, why, why do you live like that? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Have you have you heard my preaching about the exampleship of the Jonadab? I don't know if you still remember Amen. that. I remember that, Pastor. All right, all right. That that's a very nice message. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. You know, Jonadab <laughs> told them, "Don't that live in, 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 in a concrete. Yeah, don't live in the concrete walls. Don't live in a in a in a in a, in a, in a uh, permanent homes." They always live in tents, movable. They, they live like pilgrims. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe a lot of people were wondering, these guys are crazy. But 300 years later, when Jeremiah came on the scene, you know, when, when, when Nebuchadnezzar started invading Jerusalem, those people that own concrete houses, it would be difficult for them. But yeah. those that living in tents, it was easy for them to move. So now you see the wisdom. Brothers and sisters, now it's mm -hmm. paying off because they listen. And Jeremiah uses the, the descendants of Jehonadab to shame the nation of Israel. God said, I send you prophets after prophets after prophets to warn you, to let, to tell you, you know, everything, and you did not listen. But Jehonadab and his descendants, you know, 300 years later after Jehonadab gave them these commandments, they were... They, they followed it religiously, you know, they followed it faithfully. And therefore, brothers and sisters, the descendants of Jehonadab were used by Jeremiah to shame the nation of Israel. So if we are truly uh, believers of what we profess and confess and hold dear that we're living in the end time, do I say you quit your job? No. That, that's not my, I'm not saying you live like nomads, no. My point is, we should slowly begin to live a life that even if you're working, even if the Lord blesses you, you know one day you're living, brothers and sisters. Yes, amen. That should be our, that should be <clears throat> our, uh, uh, you know, uh, the prevailing attitude in, in our hearts. Whether you're living by the way of the grave or living by the way of the catching away. Yeah, Either I mean, way, you <clears throat> know that all of these things, we're leaving it all behind. Amen. Okay? And therefore, if we believe that we have a sure word of prophecy, mm -hmm. you know what's the, 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 the benefit of this? As I said last Sunday, nothing in this world can make you jealous. Nothing yeah. in this world or no human being, no matter how they would like to flaunt whatever it is they have, they cannot yeah. make you envious. Why? Amen. You are you are the word of God. <laughs> Amen. 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 You are Amen. the word of God in the flesh. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. the sure word of prophecy. We are the sure word of prophecy living Amen. in the flesh. Yes. That's why Panam will always say, we are the word bride. We're yes. closed with the word. We're, 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 we're dressed with the word of God. Okay? So, so it's not a literal garment or clothing, mm -hmm. but we, okay, the bride, the church, the people, okay, yes. becomes the word of God in the flesh. Okay? I mean, you are a sure word of prophecy. You become... The star, you become the lamp that shines in dark places, brothers and sisters. My, this is something. 
All right. Um, yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why do we know and we believe that it's us, a and we can confirm it because in mm -hmm. verse twenty, knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scriptures comes from someone's own interpretation. Nobody can interpret the Bible or the scripture except that person is filled with the Holy Ghost. It, it, regardless mm -hmm. whether you're a theologian or what degree you hold, you cannot decipher the Bible except it's unveiled to you. Amen. Except you have the Holy Spirit. For Amen. no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But mm -hmm. man spoke from God as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So the same inspiration that inspired the prophets, the apostles, the men of God to speak the word of the Lord should be the same Holy Spirit, we being the recipient, okay, brothers and sisters, that should inspire us so that what they spoke, that we receive it, we can understand. It becomes clear to us the meaning, the context, the message, the revelation behind the letter and behind the the, the uttered word or even the, the written word okay we see the spirit behind the letter because jesus said the the words that i speak unto you their spirit and their life hallelujah mm, so therefore mm. we need really the inspiration of the holy spirit and if you become the prophetic word brothers and sisters hallelujah if you become Amen. that then I can say, you are like a man. Like what Paul said in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Hallelujah. All right. Well, sorry for the late comer. I am about to, <laughs> to end now. Hallelujah. Verse 14. This is the end. Ephesians 4.14. So that we may no longer be children. All right? Tossed to and fro. So in fro. Amen. Amen. Mm. You are not easily persuaded anymore. Why? Because mm. you have a sure word of prophecy. You are the sure word of prophecy in Amen. the flesh. Hallelujah. You are no longer children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about. By every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes, brothers and sisters. What have you become? You become an unmovable, unshakable, strong, mature believers of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you can say to anyone <laughs> that asks of you, of your testimony, of your confession, you can say to them, hey, we're not following myths. We're not following urban legends. We're not following marvels. We're not following fantasy. But we have a sure word of prophecy. And I hope and I pray that my life um, is in line with my confession. <clears throat> that I hope what you see in my life okay, is in parallel, is in harmony with my faith. Because... Uh, that is what we want to display here on earth, brothers and sisters. We yeah. become a light, not hid in a bushel, but be put on top that everyone can see our good works. Therefore, they may glorify our Heavenly Father. Praise Amen. the Lord. So, how can you be unshakable? Make sure you have a sure word of prophecy. Make sure you know you are the sure word of prophecy in the flesh. Okay, you are the word becoming flesh. You are the epistles, Paul said, written and read by men. Praise Amen. be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope, I hope uh, you enjoy this, brothers and sisters. Very short, but I hope that bahala na kayo. You can, you can, you can uh -huh. break it down even more. Because there's so much to this. Because this short word of prophecy encompasses the whole messages of the whole Bible. When you say uh, short word of prophecy, that's from Genesis to Revelation. Because all of the information that emanated from God, given to the servants all throughout the ages, they know it was a short word of prophecy. That's why Jesus can say, your father Abraham 
rejoice to see my day. How did he see it? Through prophetic Amen. eyes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, so thank you all. I hope Amen. you enjoyed it. God bless you. Have a blessed you, week. June. Salamat. Uh, knowing who you are. God bless Amen. you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sister Raida. Sir Alan, Sir Tori, Sir Lisa, uh, Sir Pearl, Hong Kong Saints, Brother William, Joy, Brother Rene, Brother Ronnie, Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Brother Kenny, Thank you. everybody. Sister Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. God bless. Uh, God bless. Tumapoy family. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Paul. Nag-enjoy kayo. Yeah. Amen. 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 You are. Your Lord. Okay. God bless. God bless. God bless. Amen. 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 Amen.